Come back. Last class, we were talking about memory interfacing to 86, uh, the address decoding, etc. Today's class will be about uh, IO interfacing to 86 and its processors. The whole IO interfacing is divided into two parts. In first part, we'll be talking about uh, buffers and latches, whereas in the second part, the same IO interfacing will be done through 8255. Okay. So, brief introduction. So, what exactly are uh, IVO ports? The IVO ports are input output ports and as you know these are the devices through which uh, the microprocessor communicates uh, with the external data sources. For example, if it has to read uh, data from a keypad, a joystick, mouse, etc., it has to go through an input uh, circuitry. And similarly, if it has to send the data to an external device such as a CRT display, 7 segment, printer, etc., it has to go through an output device. So, for the external world, the processor requires the interfacing to, you can say, input device as well as output devices. Together, these are known as IO devices and uh, what are IO ports? The ports tell you the address uh, assigned to each of these devices. Now, coming to the uh, 86 processors from 8086 to Pentium, the external IO devices that we call as port, each can be an 8 or 16 bit bytes. And uh, the communication is through IO instructions. The IO instruction has this format in destination and source. And if it's an output instruction, it is out destination and source. So, as usual, like move destination and source, it is replaced by in and out. The first will be the destination operand, the second will be the source operand. The access of the data for this in and out instruction is always through AL accumulator if it is an 8 bit data and if it is a 16 bit data it is through AX. The other feature is the you have an extra what you call address space and this address space is known as IO space and this is in addition to the memory space. And these address spaces are related through an extra pin and that pin is known as IO slash MBAR. If this pin is low, it will access the memory address space and if this pin is high, it will access the IO space. Then what is the difference between a memory uh, space and an IO space? Your memory can contain both the data and opcodes. Your opcodes are your program whereas the IO ports contain only data. And the addressing of this in and out instruction is through your addressing modes. As such, there are two addressing modes. One is direct addressing mode and other is indirect addressing mode. What do you mean by direct addressing mode? In direct addressing mode, the 8-bit or 16-bit data, the 8-bit uh, port address is given directly. As we have seen, the port address can be 8 bits or 16 bits and if the address is 8 bits, we can use direct addressing mode. In direct addressing mode, in for in the destination operand is accumulator AL and uh, the address 8 bit address is given directly. Whereas, if it is a 16 bit data, uh, instead of AL, we are using AX. Remember, AX is 16 bit accumulator and AL is 8 bit accumulator. So, in AX, again, once again, the 8 bit address of the input device. Similarly, for out, 
for out instruction first the destination operand the destination operand is a port address here and the port address is output device is having 8 bit address comma uh, here ax specified 16 bit data is sent to this uh, port which has an 8 bit address and this instruction out port number comma al sends 8 bit data the data is in al and this address specifies uh, the address of the output device in indirect addressing mode the in input or output ports will have 16 bit address when you have 16 bit address you cannot use direct addressing mode the 16 bit address should be put in dx register this is mandatory so the dx contains the 16 bit address of the io ports so first load a dx with the 16 bit uh, immediate address value then if i use the instruction in al comma dx it implies from the device whose address is in dx that data is moved into al and al specifies 8 bit data as being transferred similarly out dx comma al implies contents of al are moved into an output device whose address is in dx and if the data size is increased from 8 bit to 16 bit al will be replaced by ax the port address may remain the same it is a 16 bit address but now instead of transferring 8 bit data from the device we are transferring 16 bit data so in al comma dx will be replaced by in ax comma dx and once again dx is previously loaded with the 16 bit port address now oh, just to recap we have the processor and the processor is accessing the memory as well as the IO devices and in the part one of our uh, lecture we had talked about this portion that is accessing memory to access memory we had the address lines 20 address lines a0 to a19 and this was accessing 1 mega or 2 power 20 memory locations and that was also supported by this uh, io slash m bar because of the, the here io slash m bar should be low to access the memory and to access the io devices we do not use a complete 20 uh, bit address lines rather only 16 bit address lines the 16 bit address lines are a0 to a15 and if it is 8 bit address lines it is a0 to a7 and along with this so we have uh, io slash m bar equal to 1 to access the io device so same a0 to a15 uh, on memory and io but uh, the io slash m bar will decide whether the address is for memory or io devices and in memory we have the control sig signals memory read and memory write and similarly for io devices we have the control signals io read and io write io read is used for input devices io write is used for output devices these control signals io slash m bar ensures i have separate memory space and separate io space the addresses can be same but uh, the space it law uh, address whether memory or io is decided by an extra pin io slash m bar and for the same address let us say address 300 whether i am accessing the input device or output device is given by io read and io write say i have 300 h the same 300 h i can allot to an output device and the same 300 h i can allot to an input device so which is accessed when 300 h is present on the address lines it depends on extra control signal i will read and i will write when i will write is enabled the data from output device will be enabled that is you send the data to output device and when i will read is enabled data from input is taken in and this is a small example of the different uh, possibilities that you can have as i said the port address can be either 8 bit or 16 bit so 8 bit example say 32 h and this is specified directly in the io instruction 
and if it is a 16 bit port address it is not specified directly in the instruction rather we use a register dx register and then uh, after loading in the dx register we use a IO instructions. Since it is an 8 bit port address the address lines used are A0 to A7 and if it is a 16 bit port address the address lines are A0 to A15 and what are the combinations that we can have. This uh, uh, address is 8 bit, what about the data? The data can be 8 bit data or it can be a eight, uh, 16 bit data and not only it can the data can be 8 bit or 16 bit, it can be either an input port or an output port. For each combination what is the instruction? Example instruction, we have kept the address constant, the address is 32 H. So, in AL comma 32 H, what does this read? This in is an in input uh, instruction, so it is reading from an input port and AL specifies that is it is an 8 bit data and from which port it is reading from 32 H port and uh, what does 32 H uh, imply? 32 H implies that the port has an 8 bit address. 8 bit address whereas AL specifies the data size, the data size is given on D0 to D7, the data size is also 8 bits and if I increase the data size to 16 bit, remember your 886 processor is a 16 bit processor, it can access along with 8 bits, it can also access 16 bit data and if it is accessing 16 bit data, the data lines used are D0 to D15 and the accumulator instead of AL, it will be AX. So, the simple instruction in AX comma 32 H, what does it specify? It specifies that the data is 16 bit, the 16 bit data is on D0 to D15 and that is uh, moved on to the data bus. What about the address? The address is 32 H and that 32 H is moved on to the address bus, which is the address bus A0 to A7. So, similarly uh, for output ports, in the output ports first I have the desti destination, the destination is the output device and then the accumulated data has to be moved to the output device. To move the accumulator data to the output device, I use the instruction out 32H, AL. Similarly, out 32H, AX. What is the difference between these two instructions? The address is same 32H, but here both of them are 8 bits, but the data that is moved in this case is 8 bit and the data that is moved here is 16 bit. So, to the same device, here we are moving 8 bit data and here we are moving 16 bit data and from 8886 to the device, can you see the direction of the data bus? The direction of the data bus is towards the output device and not only this, along with this data bus, you use a control signal IO write. So, this is IO write. For these two, the control signal used is IO read. So, this is for 8 bit port address and similarly for 16 bit port address, what are the features or the points that we have to remember? The features that we have to remember is since it is 16 bit port address, you cannot use direct addressing mode. We have to use indirect addressing mode. In the indirect addressing mode, the register DX will contain the port address. So, let us fix up uh, the port address something like 8900H. So, every time uh, you have to move DX with the port address. So, in all the combinations, so we are moving uh, DX with the uh, 8900H. And apart from this, what are the other combination? It can be an input device or an output device. For input device, you have the in instruction. For output device, we have the out instruction. And apart from input output, the next combination that we talk about is whether it is an 8 bit data or a 16 bit data that we are writing out to the output device. So, if it is 8 bit data, it is AL that is in AL comma DX or out uh, DX comma AL and if it is a 16 bit data, it the AX specifies a 16 bit data in AX comma DX or out DX comma AX. Here DX is the destination, AX is a source for out. For in AX is the destination and from the input device whose address is in DX is brought into AX. So, this is about the complete uh, in simple two in and out instruction with various combinations. The various combinations are the 
port address it can be 8 bit or 16 bit then we also have the combination of whether the data is 8 bit or 16 bit it's specified by AL and AX then coming to the number of devices that you can connect the number of devices that you can connect it depends on the address here I have A0 to A7 8 address lines so with 8 address lines you can have 2 power 8 or 256 combinations so since we can have 256 combinations you can connect 256 devices but we also have an extra line what is the extra line I will read and I will write so with this extra line of I will read and I will write I can duplicate this 256 addresses to 00 to FF the same 00 to FF I can have for input device and the same 00 to FF I can have for output device the differences will be given apart from A0 to A7 you have an extra line that extra line is I will read for input and I will write for output so total number of uh, devices that you can have with 8 bit uh, address lines is 256 inputs a plus 256 output devices and if we increase the address lines to 16 so 16 is a0 to a15 so if I increase it to 16 the combinations are 2 power 16 so 2 power 16 is 64 K locations or the address will change from all four zeros to four F's and this 64 K is also represented as 65536 input devices and same number of output devices here k represents 2 power 10 and 2 power 10 as you know is 1024 and moving on to a few example ALPs let us say first we write an ALP to toggle the bits of port address 300 H continuously so I have an output device where let us say LEDs are connected at this uh, 300 H and these LEDs have to be switched on and off continuously so first since it is 300 H it's not an 8 bit address it's a 16 bit address I move DX with the address and DX contains 300 H and uh, let me have uh, a pattern 55 and AA so 55 ensures all the odd numbered uh, LEDs are high and even numbered LEDs are low so it is 0101 next if I change the pattern to A, expand A. A is 10 1 0 1 0 8 plus 2 10 and similarly when I look at 55 and A first I output 55 so LED will be LED number 0 will be 1 next when I output A the same LED will become 0 previously whichever LED was 0 it will become 1 so all the LEDs are getting toggled if it is high it becomes low and vice versa so the pattern used for toggling 8 bits is 55 and AA so first let us move AL with 55 one pattern output on the output device the output device may be a bank of LEDs so out DX comma AL then you if you want we can have a small delay here delay is not given rather directly we are moving AL with the AA that is the next pattern this pattern ensures that the LEDs are toggled and then we output it on the same uh, device the device will be the output device with an address 300 H and jump okay this should be again instead of jump back you write jump again okay so just change this uh, label to again so what does this instruction do continuously it will uh, toggle the bits or uh, whatever output device is there from 55 to A let us take one more example in this example uh, to illustrate in and out instruction the previous example just il illustrated just out instructions with 8 bit data the 8 bit data was 55 and AA but the address was 16 bit address and was a 16 bit address 300 in the next example uh, of the uh, we use both input and output devices it's a simple ALP wherein we bring in 8 bit data from 302 uh, that's your input device and we add uh, the contents of BL let us say BL is uh, containing some data that is added to it and then when we add it uh, we are bringing in 8 bit data BL is another 8 bit when we add two 8 bit numbers the result is a 16 bit sum uh, 
So, that 16 bit sum is sent to the uh, output device and that output device has a port address 45 H. Just look at the uh, program. In this program, the data is the input data is 8 bit data, but the address of the input port is 16 bit. So, the port address is 16 bit, the input data is 8 bit. And what about the output? The output sum that I am uh, sending out is 16 bit, but the output port has an address 8 bit. So, I can use direct addressing for output. For input, since it is uh, 16 bit address, I have to use indirect addressing. So, the first uh, line I will say here is move dx with 302, indirect addressing. 16 bit address is moved into dx in AL comma DX. The AL specifies 8 bit. 8 bit of data is moved from the port whose address is 302. And then oh, we will say, uh, let us say initialize carry register, let us say move H comma 00. Add to this AL the BL contents, let us say BL is already loaded with some value. When we add, we ch just check whether there is a carry. If there is a uh, carry, increment the carry register. If there is no carry, just skip. So, the final sum is in AL and AX, sorry AL and AH and together that is your AX and this AX 16 bit uh, data is transferred to the destination. The destination is an output uh, port with an 8 bit address. Since it is an 8 bit address, I need not have to use DX again. Directly I can say out 45 H comma AX. So, recapping get the data uh, from a 16 bit uh, port address and the data 8 bit data and the, so use AL and then add AL with BL and if there is a carry increment AH. So, together AL and AH contains a 16 bit uh, sum and that sum AX move it to the output port and the output port here has 8 bit address. So, we can use direct addressing mode without uh, loading DX again. So, this is one more example uh, from uh, Mazidi text that is your reference text. Okay, here what do we do? We take the temperature from a sensor which is connected at port number 22 and we check whether the temperature is 100 degrees and we keep monitoring till it becomes 100. As soon as it is become 100, we load a register BH with the character Y. So, we start the program with in AL comma 22. So, the sensor is located at 22 H and it is giving me 8 bit data that is into AL in AL comma 22. So, AL has a temperature and I am comparing whether AL is equal to 100. So, if it is not the 0 flag will not be set. So, you go on uh, going back. If it is uh, equal to the 0 flag will be set. If the 0 flag is set, it will not go back rather it will execute the next instruction which is this move a h comma y. Y in code specifies the ASCII value of the character. So, in this uh, section just let us summarize what all we have studied. So, uh, we have studied that in a x86 system that is from 8086 to Pentium the uh, address bus uh, A0 to A7 specifies 8 bit address and these addresses 8 bit addresses for port when they are used the maximum number of input ports that you can have is 256 that is 00 to FF and at the same time parallelly I can use the same 256 number of output ports. So, this is possible as I said because of the I O read and I O write in conjunction with A0 to A7. And if uh, the 8 bit address is uh, increased to 16 bit address, the total uh, it can have is 2 power 16 or 64k addresses. So, we can have 65,000 IO ports. So, 64k input ports, 64k output ports. And the instruction that we have out to 24H AL, what does it do? Uh, from AL, uh, 8 bit data is sent to a port and uh, what is the port address here? 24H, it is 8 bit port. So, this is direct addressing mode wherein I have not used DX. There is no need to use DX, we can specify the port address directly. And this is a small ALP to access, uh, accept data from port 300 and send it out to port 304. So, since both are uh, 16 bit uh, addresses, I have to use indirect that is DX itself. Move DX with 300, that is your input 
port address in AL comma DX get the data from this then again uh, change the address now address uh, to point to the output port move DX with 304 now this is your output port whatever data is already there in AL which we have got from input port send it to the output using out DX comma AL and the last uh, uh, we can just say a small ALP instruction to place the status of port 60H in CH. CH is the register and the port 60H is the input mode. So, in AL comma 60H, why 60H is 8 bit? So, I can use the address directly and AL specifies its 8 bit data. In AL comma 60H, get the data, put it in AL, move CH comma AL. The same 8 bit data is moved into CH register. Until now, we were talking about the address lines, whether it is 8 bit or a 16 bit address lines. So, physically, we, how is this address decoded and the control signals generated? So, for the control signals, as I said, we need a read for input device and write for output device. So, these control signals along with the address which can be 8 bit or 16 bit, they are decoded and that will be used for cell, uh, generating the chip select. And when we talk about an output port or an input port, the design is little different. So, for output port, uh, we need I will write control signal. Apart from this I will write and the address on the address lines, these have to be latched. Remember the 8086 output pins are uh, the pins are multiplexed pins multiplex pins means the same pins uh, perform multiple operations and the data that is sent out on the bus is there only for a short duration of time since they are there for a short duration of time they have to be latched especially the address you have to latch as when we a leap pin is high so, the first step that we do is whatever the data is sent out by the CPU on the uh, data bus, it has to be latched. Whereas, in the memory device, you have an internal latch, where for an IO device, especially an output device, they, do, uh, they might not come with a latch. So, physically, we have to provide an extra latch, and that latch generally is 373. And this latching device uh, will have two pins. So, one is uh, the output control pin uh, that has to be grounded and the enable pin uh, to enable the latching action. To enable the latching action, we have as I said decode the address lines plus I will write for output device. Let us see this with a circuit. Now, in this circuit, we have the 373 data latch and in this data latch we have 8 input lines and 8 output lines internally each pin is connected to a D flip flop and when this D flip flop is enabled when it is enabled whatever data is there on the input line will be stored in the flip flop and it will appear at the queue. And when uh, you at the output side, this will uh, this is latching operation. Whatever has been latched inside, uh, it, it has to come at the output. Uh, it will come at the output when the output control is enabled. Generally, what we do is we permanently ground this OC. We permanently enable the output. So as soon as latching operation is over, it will come at the output. So, for this the output control let us say if I permanently ground let us say it is all low 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 and if the enable pin is high and the data pin is high the output is high. So, this is enabled D is 1. So, automatically Q will be 1 and the output will also be 1 and if D is 0 output will be 0 and even this 1 Q will be 0. And uh, if uh, this enable is low, if enable is low, then what will be present here? What will be present here? The previous data will be present. Uh, remember, this is controlled to your processor and your processor uh, data lines or address lines keep changing. Only when the enable signal is given for a short duration of time, the relevant data is latched inside. Once it is latched inside the relevant data, you should uh, disable this latching operation. Further latching operation is disabled. Rather, whatever is already stored at this queue should be 
seen at the output. To see at the output, we use the output control. That's your OC bar. This you can permanently ground. Uh, whatever is already stored will come here. And remember, the latching operation will happen uh, only when you give the enable signal. And when do we give the enable signal? When the relevant data is present at the input. So, what does a latch do? the data whichever is there on the input lines will be latched upon that is if it is 1 it will store 1 if it is 0 it will store 0 and until you give the further enable signal the old data continues here and that old data will appear at the output pins provided this output control is 0 or it is enabled. Now, this is a design circuitry wherein the output device has an address uh, 99H and uh, to show this 99H we have to decode. So, A0 to A7 is 99, expand this uh, 99 it is 1001 and 1001 and since it is an output device we also need IO uh, right and this IO right is an active low so that should be 0 and this combination of address and IO right signal which is coming from the processor that is your 8086 it generates the G signal that is your enable for this. So, only when this is valid when this address and the right signal is valid this latch is enabled and the data that is there uh, what is the data that is there here on D0 to D7 whatever is there in AL whatever is there in AL will be on the data lines. Where is this 99H? This 99H is on the address lines. The address lines are A0 to A7. Along with IO write together, you give it to an AND gate. And when all of them are satisfied, the G, the enable signal, will enable all these latches. So, when I look at the decoding circuitry, uh, you can see A0 is high, then the next two pins are low then A1 and next two are high, so no bubbles and then we have the next two pins low that is 0, 0 and the last A7 high. So, you decode when this combination is present, okay, if this is 0 then the output here will be 1, all 1s will be there and here this will be 1 and when this is 0, I will write, so this will be 1, so both 1, 1 and this will be 1 and it will activate this. So, when we have to decode it, expand the address and if it is 1 you give directly and if it is 0 give it through an inverter and all of the address lines you give it to a logic gate so here we are using an AND gate and this AND gate along with uh, the IO write together will generate the G signal here remember G is active high and it should be 1 if it is active low we would have used an AND gate but for this latch uh, 373 latch G is an active high input and what about the output control? The output control is permanently grounded. So, whatever data is latched into G will appear at its output lines that is Q0 to Q7. Now, if I increase here this is an 8 bit uh, address 99H and if I increase it to 16 bit uh, address that is 31FH then I have to add two more extra address lines A0 to A7, A8 and A9, so 3. The 3 is uh, A8 and A9, both of them are 1, 1 and this A0 to A7, so expand F, F is all 1s, A0, then 1. Uh, 1 is uh, 3 zeros and 1s. Can you see this 3 zeros and then 1? So, that is uh, 1F and what about 3? 3 is the next two address lines that is A8 and A9. So, they are 1, 1. Here we have not decoded the rest of the address lines. Which are the rest of the address lines? A10 to A15. Since we have not decoded uh, the rest of the address lines, so this is known as uh, partial uh, decoding. And if I use complete A0 to A15, it is full decoding or absolute decoding. And if it is partial uh, decoding, we will come to it later, uh, multiple addresses will activate this. For example, A0 to A9, this one will be there. Whatever is the status on A10 to A15, still it will activate this. So, you can say multiple addresses are mapped uh, for to this 373. So, these multiple addresses as you know are called as aliases, same concept we had seen in the memory decoding. So, this is your decoding along with I will read, I will write, uh, it will enable this latch. 
and the data here is once again 8 bit data and that will be there. Suppose 16 bit data is there, we need 2 latches, uh, 2 8 bit latches. So, next moving on to input port design, for output ports we need latch whatever is there on the memory, uh, whatever is there on the data lines has to be latched. Uh, for uh, uh, input design, uh, let, uh, the inputs have to drive uh, the processor uh, lines and they have to su uh, supply sufficient to current etc. So, we need buffers and these buffers are generally tri-state buffers. So, what do you mean by tri-states? They have two states, 1 and 0. Along with that, we have an extra state that is the third state that is a Z state where it is a high impedance state. When it is in high impedance state, it is as if that device is disconnected from the bus. Physically, it will be connected, but electrically, it will be disconnected. It will be neither 1 nor 0. The advantage is many such devices can share the bus. Only the device which is activated will use its two states, either a high or a low. The device which is not activated will be in its Z state or tri state high impedance as if it is disconnected. So, now what is this 2474LS2444 uh, used for? This is used along with an input device and basically it is used for buffering and uh, uh, along with buffering that is impedance matching, it also gives a sufficient uh, current. So, it will act as a driver. So, you can say it is having a high driving uh, capability and remember this is unidirectional. What do you mean by unidirectional buses? Is from input device to the processor. And in this uh, 244, another feature is uh, it can, uh, though it is an 8 bit uh, uh, buffer, uh, 4 bits and each nibble can be controlled separately. And uh, the 4 bits, uh, 1 4 bit uh, will be controlled by 1 G, the next 4 bits will be con uh, controlled by the 2 G pin. And how about the addresses? For the addresses, once again we have the address lines A0 to A7, along with that we have the control signal IOR and both of them generate the enable signal which will enable the inputs of the buffer. And uh, if I instead of 244, if I use 245, it can be used for bidirectional buses. Bidirectional buses means it can transmit data in either direction. Your 244, uh, when I use it for input device, only from input to processor. In 245, uh, it can act as a transceiver. It can as well as transmit and receive your data. So, this is your LS244. It is an octal buffer that is 8 uh, uh, bits it can store. Uh, it can buffer 8 bits and uh, top 4 lines and bottom 4 lines. Top 4 are enabled by 1G, bottom by 2G and these are your output lines. And when we do the decoding circuitry for this uh, input port, let us say the address is 9F. Once again, 9F when you expand, it is 1001 and triple 1. And remember here, I have 1G bar and 2G bar. Uh, in 373, I had active high G. Here, this bar indicates it is active low. So, instead of AND gate, we use NAND gates. And uh, addressing decoding is the same. If it is 1, you connect it directly and if it is 0, so you connect it through an inverter. So, A0 to A7, the decoded, uh, the given address is decoded, given to the NAND gate. Why NAND gate? Because these are active low enable ones. Along with that, you give IO uh, read uh, signal because it is an input device and this uh, here both 1G and 2G are shorted together. So, this will enable all 8 bits at a one, once and uh, they enable the buffering of the data. Whatever is there on the input device will be present on the processor data lines. The processor data lines is D0 to D7 and from here it will be taken into the accumulator AL. And once again here we have uh, another example with the 5F. Once again you expand the 5F and this shows the internal short circuiting of 1G and uh, 2G and the data lines that are present. We have one more concept known as memory mapped IO and peripheral IO. Till now we were talking about separate IO space uh, with uh, A0 to A7 or A0 to A15. 
uh, for this you require extra pin that is IO slash M bar and we need a separate decoding circuitry etc. Instead of this, if my memory is not occupying all the 2 power 20 locations, remember in 86 we have 20 address lines, so you can have 2 power 20 locations or 1 megabyte of memory. If my processor does not have 1 megabyte of memory, rather it is less, let us say it can use some 200k, 300k etc. Some unused memory locations are there. So, these unused memory locations you can allot to IO. Instead of having separate uh, IO address space, some of the memory addresses can be directly mapped to the IO devices, input and output devices. When you do this sort of mapping, that is use the memory addresses itself to access the IO devices, then that technique is known as memory mapped IO. Suppose you have separate uh, uh, address uh, space for IO devices, it is known as IO mapped IO or peripheral IO or isolated IO. If I use that peripheral IO or isolated IO, I need to use separate instructions which are the in and out instructions. If I use memory mapped IO, I need not use the in and out instruction, I will, you will be using the move instructions. So, for uh, input port it will be move AL comma 2000 that is from 2000 uh, in bracket square bracket that gives me the 16 bit address directly that will be moved into AL. Similarly, out in instruction. This out instruction will be done through a move instruction no? because this 2000 is a memory location remember. Now, so at that uh, location we have kept a, a input device and in this case we have kept an output device. So, the instruction will be moved 2010 comma AL. What is the advantage of memory mapped IO? Entire 20 bit addresses can be decoded. And this also requires the uh, data segment, the segment registers to be loaded before execution. So, the 20 bit physical address needs the segment registers plus the effective address. The effective address is 2000 or 2010 directly, but uh, for A0 to A19, I also need the segment register. So, this has to be loaded before. In peripheral IO, this is not needed. Only the 8 bit data you can give the in the in and out instruction directly or the 16 bit data which you have to use DX register. The other uh, uh, difference is uh, if the physical address is something like 34000, as I said, you have to load DX first, sorry, DS, the data segment register first, and then uh, the effective uh, or offset you have to. Uh, specify immediate offset you are specifying or this can be in another register like your BX, uh, SIDI etc. Then from that you can move it to AL. The implication is uh, the decoding circuitry is expensive as all the 20 bit addresses are decoded. Whereas, in peripheral IO only the 8 bits or 16 bit uh, addresses are decoded, number of uh, decoding lines are reduced. Then the control signals for input device I need memory read and for output device I need memory write same as like a memory location read write. Whereas, in peripheral IO we will be using the IO read and IO write and the number of ports here can go up to 2 power 20 that is 1 mega ports we can use. Here remember for 8 bit we have 256 and for 16 bit address lines you can have 64 k input and output ports. So, number of ports with memory map IO can go up, but when I use the memory location for an input and output device the same address, so that location I cannot use for my memory. So, the amount of memory space that is available is reduced because the same space you are allocating for IO and uh, we also do not have continuous blocks of memory available, it may lead to fragmentation. In between you have kept an input or output device or allocated for that, so there will be memory fragmentation, it will be cut into pieces. If I have separate uh, uh, IO or peripheral IO, you have an extra space, but it is a cost of an extra pin IO slash uh, M bar and risk processors and all. Generally, you do not have this in and out instructions or these extra pins, uh, but you can have uh, uh, you can uh, allocate some memory for these IO devices, then we can go for memory mapped IO. 
But if I can have uh, a CISC processor with I was slash M bar extra pin and extra instruction that is in and out instruction, we can go for peripheral IO. The other example, other advantages are uh, here uh, mm, we can uh, as I said uh, use in and out and this is move instructions and here the data can be directly transferred to any register. Let us say I am transferring it to BL directly. Whereas, uh, in with in and out I can ha I have to move through accumulator, you cannot directly transfer to BL. To directly transfer to BL, I have to get it into AL first, from AL you have to move to BL. Whereas, uh, uh, with memory mapped another advantage is since you can move it to any register directly without accumulator, you can also perform other operations like arithmetic logic operations directly. Let us say this add BL comma 2000, what does it do? The data at 2000 is added with BL and uh, the result is kept in BL. Whereas, the same thing if I have to use with the in and out instruction, what I have to do? Move DX comma 2000, load the address 16 bit, then get the data into AL. After getting the data into AL, I have to add these two. Here accumulator is freed up, it can be used for other purpose in memory mapped IO. Whereas, in peripheral IO, accumulator has to be dedicated for in and out instruction. So, just a little review. As we have seen, the 373 is a latch, it is used for output devices, the 244 is a tri-state buffer, but so it is unidirectional, 245 is bidirectional uh, buffer and then uh, what about the CPU? It provides data on the database for a short time only and so we have to latch this data for slow devices. And this 373 is known as a transparent latch because if its output control is permanently grounded and as soon as uh, G is enabled, the data is available at the output immediately without any delay. So, it is known as a transparent latch. Though we enable and output is there, when does the latching happen? The latching happens when G goes from high to low. And what about the decoding uh, process? In the decoding process, uh, if I have memory mapped uh, IO, you use memory read and memory write uh, compared to IO read and IO write. And out of these two 8 bit and 16 bit addresses, 16 bit addresses accesses maximum number of ports. Then let us look at the IO address maps of uh, x86 uh, uh, PCs. So, suppose I have the IBM PCs or uh, any computer, you have to ad uh, allocate addresses to various peripherals like your COM port, uh, printer port, etc. And these are the designated IO port addresses so that there is no confusion. The generically 000 to 1F is given to the DMA controller. Uh, then to 3F you have the interrupt controller, then you have the timer, then uh, you have the keypad controller, then the printer ports etcetera. So, all this will be generally available in any of these uh, uh, PCs and in the appendix also it is available. Then as I said there were two types of decoding, one is absolute de decoding and the partial decoding is also known as linear select address. De in absolute decoding all the address lines are decoded, uh, whereas in partial only selected lines for example, A0 to A9 only were decoded. What about A10 to A15 which we have seen example, they were not decoded. So, this is cheaper, the partial decoding is cheaper because it has lesser number of inputs and fewer uh, decoding gates. But the disadvantage is aliases, same port will have multiple addresses. The unused address lines if they change, even then uh, this will get access to provided the use lines are the same. And so, to use this uh, linear address decoding, we have to document the port addresses in the IO map uh, uh, thoroughly. So, when we document this, we have large gap in the IO addresses in the absolute. Uh, so, for example, we have the prototype addresses 300 to 31F in x86 PCs. So, we have to set aside some cards in the expansion slot. So, whenever you buy a PC and you have a uh, gaming card etcetera, you plug it in you into the expansion slot. When you 
plug in into the expansion slot. It means that in these expansion slots will be already allocated with some addresses. Uh, so, you also have instead of the gaming card, generally we have data acquisition boards which will be used to get some signals like temperature, pressure, etcetera. And uh, expansion slots will be depending on two types one is ISA and PCI, which we have studied in last class. And in the ISA expansion slot, we have uh, 62 pins, uh, wherein you have IOR, IO along with AN signal for decoding. Okay. So, this uh, method of partial and decoding we will uh, study in uh, uh, next class. Okay. Thank you.